If you're afraid of spiders, you're probably going to want to look away because today we're going to talk about the brown recluse spider. We're going to talk about how to identify it, how to avoid it, how its bite evolves, and how we manage it. Y'all know me, I'm Dr. B, and this is The Buzz. The brown recluse, or Loxosceles reclusa, is a small, light to medium brown spider, about one half to two centimeters long. That's about the size of a penny, which is not very impressive. Still, it's a pretty spider. It usually has a violin-shaped mark on its middle, which is why it's often called the violin spider. There's another picture of the classic violin shape in its middle, and this is a typical egg sac for the brown recluse. This spider lives in the south and south central US. That's the solid gray region on this map. And there are similar species that live in the southwest, the area with the black lines. The brown recluse is called the recluse because it's reclusive. It's not commonly seen. It's nocturnal, it's not very aggressive, and it likes to live in undisturbed places like closets or basements. You won't often see it wandering out in the open like you do with many common spiders. It also very much likes wooded sheltered spaces like wood piles, tree bark, park benches, and wooden docks, which is where a lot of the kids around the lake country here in Georgia get bites. The venom of the brown recluse contains proteases, which are enzymes that destroy proteins and tissues. The initial bite is often painless, and it may go unnoticed for a few hours, but then it evolves over a few distinct stages. The early reaction occurs after the first two to eight hours. You'll see some redness and swelling with slowly increasing pain and burning. Over the next one to three days, the wound continues to change and grow. These pictures are over a six day period. Central blistery scabby area develops as in A at the top left. In that photo, that's about a day and a half. Then at the top right, that's 24 hours in. And this is a red, white, and blue sign. There's redness that blanches, meaning you can press on it and it goes kind of pale. And there's a central bluish tint to it. The bottom left picture is at three days. Still has a little bit of that red, white, and blue look to it. You can see that the center is actually starting to look darker, starting to look black. And that's the necrotic phase. Necrotic means dead. The center of the wound dies. And this can take days to weeks. In the bottom right, at six days, you can see the center of the wound is dead. And that will ulcerate, leaving a dark eschar or a black, leathery, dead scab area. This slowly heals over weeks to months. These photos are at seven days at the top left, 12 days at the bottom left, and finally 32 days or just over a month on the right. This may leave a permanent scar, or if the necrotic area is large, the wound may need surgery to finally heal. So how do we know for sure that your child has been bitten by a brown recluse? Well, to be truthful, it's actually sometimes hard to tell. And the spider does get blamed for a lot of wounds that it doesn't cause. What we're looking for is a history of exposure to a brown recluse in an area where brown recluses are common, and we're looking for a wound that evolves in the way that we just mentioned. One very important thing we need to differentiate these bites from is a bacterial skin infection like staph or strep cellulitis. A brown recluse bite will usually grow for about three or four days and then not get any larger than that. It usually doesn't have any pus in it, and there will be necrosis at the center. On the other hand, a bacterial infection like staph or strep cellulitis usually just keeps growing until we stop it. It usually contains a lot of pus and the center is usually not necrotic. So these are the kind of things we're looking for to determine what we're dealing with. As I've said, many skin sores are often misdiagnosed as brown recluse bites because the spider is not often seen and it takes two to eight hours for the bite to show up. So there may be no clear history of a spider bite in the first place. Bites usually cause just these local effects, a skin wound, and they don't go beyond that. If there's a complication, it's usually that the spider bite gets infected with bacteria because a child scratches or picks at it. Occasionally, a brown recluse bite may cause rashes over other areas of the body or may lead to peeling of the hands or feet, but these really aren't serious problems. Serious complications are very rare, but can include fever, chills, low red blood cell count, or kidney damage, which when it does happen is more common in children. 
As far as management, if there's just a minor localized bite, taking care of this is pretty straightforward and most of this you can do yourself at home. What you wanna do is gently clean the area with soap and water, have the child rest, use a cool compress initially when the redness and pain starts and elevate the limb to reduce swelling. And you can use ibuprofen for pain and inflammation. Episode 23 will tell you all about dosing ibuprofen for your child. Below this line are things we do in the office. We'll recommend a tetanus shot if your child hasn't had one. Now antibiotics, antibiotics are used only if we think some bacteria has gotten into the wound. The spider bite itself does not need antibiotics. They won't help. So most kids do not need to be on antibiotics. As far as steroids, research does not support using these if it's just a minor bite with local swelling. Steroids are used only for systemic problems like rash, fever, or achiness. And finally, if there's bad necrosis, a big chunk of the skin has died, we'll refer the child out to surgery for wound management. So when should you see the doctor for a bite? Any child who's suspected of being bitten by a brown recluse should probably come in and get checked out as other wounds may mimic it. This is a brown recluse bite, but it sort of looks like Lyme disease, doesn't it? Also, any cases with severe pain, a big area of dead tissue, a bite in a very sensitive area like here around the eye, or if any system-wide signs show up like fever, dark urine, or yellowish skin, these should all be seen regardless of the patient's age. Prevention of bites is crucial. Make sure to shake out clothing, shoes, and bedding that's stored for a longer time in darker areas like in closets or in the attic, and wear gloves when you're cleaning these unused, undisturbed areas. Finally, if you're sitting out on that old wooden bench or a dock, going out in the barn or working around wood piles or cutting down trees, wear long sleeves or long pants, or at least keep your eyes open for brown recluse and other spiders. Thanks for watching today. I hope you enjoyed all those pictures of spiders. Make sure to subscribe and hit that little bell icon so that you get notified when new videos come out. You don't want to miss anything. We do put out a new video every single Sunday and sometimes in the middle of the week if something interesting comes in. Y'all know me, I'm Dr. B, and this has been The Buzz on Parenting and Pediatrics. We'll see you next time.